All right, well, these batteries are charged by uh, 45 watts of uh, Harbor Freight solar action um, up here to the controller. And I'm actually charging my bike right now. So we'll come over and follow this cord to the scooter charger here. This is a one and a half amp uh, scooter, 36 volt scooter charger. Um, it's automatic. Uh, it's fairly lightweight, um, so I just attached it uh, with some zip strips. Uh, the thing's pretty solid. Um, here's my DC to DC converter, so this takes it from 36 volts to 12 volts. Uh, it's rated at 5 amps. Um, I'm running a 3 amp fuse, so um, it, it's pretty good. And that's going to power uh, the solenoid, or the contactor for the main, for the motor, uh, the brake light, and uh, any other accessories that I'll add in the future, like a headlight or anything like that. So here are my uh, Power Sonic uh, AGM batteries, uh, 9 amp hour at 36 volts. And uh, coming up here, we'll start off here's a uh, the kill switch and on switch, and uh, also have a momentary on switch. I'll get to that later. Here's a cruise control and a little feedback light. Um, and let's move around to the other side. Here's that uh, 100 amp contactor. Um, do some work on this. Here's a safety cap. Uh, got 36 volts coming out of there. So here is a cheap, uh, really cheap scooter controller. Uh, the thing is this works because the Kelly one I got didn't exactly work uh, first time I use it. So I had to get this back up. It works. Um, and I actually like it because this is right at 1024. Uh, I'm running 1300 max, 36 volts, uh, but usually about 900 crews. Uh, crews about 18 miles per hour. Um, all electric you could see I chopped the crank off uh, I'm trying to keep this very inexpensive so instead of purchasing you know, a whole new bottom bracket chain rings uh, in a one way uh, I just took my uh, angle grinder zip zip it off and save uh, a couple hundred bucks um, and some time uh, so here's a little automotive uh, relay for the 12 volt to the uh, little brake light here this is a 3 LED uh, trailer brake light the thing uh, pulls a couple amps. It's pretty bright <laughs> and um, So Just a cheap uh, <laughs> Stereo fuse whatever thing works uh, And it's a fuse excellent um, So I got you know a, a lock mounted up here. I do do some testing and go to the store or something like that So here's the brains of this uh, e-bike and uh, we'll start with the throttle. So coming here to the throttle, here's a uh, Hall Effect throttle from Kelly Controller. Uh, this thing works pretty good. Um, it's a little loose. It's not like a motorcycle uh, with you, when you have some resistance there. Uh, so it is pretty loose when you go over, over bumps you're going to be throttling it. Um, but other than that it works pretty well and I do have cruise control so that makes life easier. So the signal from the Hall Effect sensor up there uh, it feeds into the Arduino and the Arduino is going to process that uh, look at some parameters I have set uh, amperage limits things like that and it's going to get its signal uh, from this Hall Effect uh, amp sensor right here and you can see the, the two big legs coming off of there and I decided some uh, big uh, uh, eyelets on there and that's uh, the ground for the uh, controller here and that's where I'm taking the uh, uh, amp feedback signal so the Arduino is going to process that and then it is going to use a digital signal output to send a voltage to that uh, scooter controller and uh, it works pretty well and I have a safety brake switch we'll come up here I've seen these in my other videos um, and that's going to be for brake safety cutoff uh, as well as that runs the brake light system. Um, I also have a little startup buzzer. Uh, we'll play with that later. Um, Onboard uh, 12 from the uh, DC DC, and then here's the uh, 12 to 5 volt uh, for some of these sensors and accessories, things like that. 
um, little light sensor uh, to for the timing of the brake light blinking. Uh, there's a little automatic blink going on there, and uh, so there's cr uh, cruise control input as well. Um, so let me go ahead and turn off the charger. And uh, so in order to start this up, I got the kill switch, but it's not going to turn it on. The Arduino's not lighting up. Um, I'll show you why. L schematic here. And uh, so you can see here's that the main contactor 100 amp and that's going to feed the um, DC DC converter which is in turn going to go feed the contactor uh, but we need a momentary switch in here to bypass and charge this up so that the loop continues and then when I do cut this off and uh, this will drain out its uh, whatever stored energy it has in it then uh, you can't uh, turn it back on without using that momentary switch to sort of get that fired up so there's a little quick fix to uh, get that going so I'll show you here I will turn this on and I have a little momentary switch here and that buzzer is a startup buzzer that means uh, it's been loaded it's in its loop cycle um, you can hear it clicking and that is the brake light And so if I do turn this off, there's actually some stored energy in that DC-DC converter. Um, what I need is a, well, that light blinked on. But I'll put a capacitor in line um, so that uh, you could probably leave it for several minutes and uh, not, not have to do the momentary switch. Uh, so I turn that off. And so... It's built with a uh, cheap frame. The bike is a stock Walmart uh, special. <clears throat> I think they're going about 160 these days. Um, full suspension, very cheap, very inexpensive. Uh, fake fo rubber band forks up front. Um, pretty tiny uh, gauge steel. There's there's play in between uh, these two uh, tubes here. Um, if you hit the brakes. Um, in the rear end here, this is this is really thin stuff. These mounts here. Uh, so, if you want to compare that to a real mountain bike, this is a uh, Weapon X downhill bike. Um, this is my next new frame, so quite a bit more beefy. Uh, disc brakes, excuse me. Um, got some hydro brakes in the front. Well, these two hundred three millimeter or something. Uh, I uh, gotta get some rims. I'm gonna look for some uh, dual crown forks, but these are pretty uh, Marzacci dirt jumpers. Not too bad. Four inches of travel, um, oil dampening um, with the uh, preload. And uh, so this this frame is uh, significant, a magnitude stronger uh, than this uh, little uh, Walmart cheapo bike. You can see the suspension travel in the rear. It's about nine inches, and uh, and then the front is is four inches. So uh, I'd probably run this a little, a little softer uh, for the road, um, just for better ride quality, things like that. Um, let's see if I forgot anything else. Uh, yeah, show you my little high torque solenoid. I'm going to mount up an automatic transmission um, using this solenoid from uh, Hobby King, about 20 bucks. Um, so I'm going to figure out uh, the mounting system for this and that will tie into the Arduino as well as uh, getting uh, speed feedback um, so I know uh, it's a little better, easier to program shifting um, and then uh, playing around with that to find efficiency and and things like that uh, along with the uh, amp feedback and then get some voltage and then can do uh, wattage meter thing like that 
So this is the bike so far, the X1E uh, experimental bike, very low budget, proof of concept, and sort of a test bed to uh, a little playground uh, before I get into uh, the X2E over here, which I'll uh, use my learnings from uh, this first bike here and sort of uh, permanently integrate them. Uh, in a frame such as uh, this Weapon X here. We'll see how it goes. Um, thank you for your time and checking out the Power Axle X1E and X2E.